Hello, my name is Jonathan Looney. I'm a network architect in Juniper Network's Education Services Department. In a previous Learning Byte, I demonstrated basic MPLS configuration using LDP. Today, I'm going to demonstrate basic RSVP configuration on Juniper devices. MPLS is a method of forwarding which involves applying a label to packets. Other routers can then use this label to forward the traffic rather than examining the layer three header information. The label typically defines a path through a network known as a label switched path, or LSP. A label switched path is a unidirectional path that carries traffic from an ingress node to an egress node. Here you see a fairly simple network. Now let's assume we want to define a label switched path from R1 to R5, such as the one you see on screen. This is perfectly acceptable, but in order for this to work, both R2 and R1 need to know which labels to use when forwarding traffic down the LSP. Now, you could configure this statically, similar to the way you configure a static route, but most people opt to use a label distribution protocol. Using a label distribution protocol, R5 can tell R2 which label R2 should use when it sends R5 traffic from the LSP. Likewise, R2 can tell R1 which label R1 should use when it sends R2 traffic from the LSP. As you can see, label distribution protocols are quite important. There are two primary label distribution protocols, the label distribution protocol, LDP, and the resource reservation protocol, also known as RSVP. Let's review a few differences between LDP and RSVP. First, by default, LDP floods all label mappings out all interfaces. One author suggested that it resembles RIP in some ways. By contrast, RSVP only sends label mappings along the path that the LSP follows. You may not even see neighbor relationships on interfaces where there are no LSPs. Another big difference is that, by default, Junos advertises labels for all slash 32 interface routes via LDP. When combined with the behavior of flooding label mappings out all interfaces, this means that each router that runs LDP should automatically end up with LSPs to the loopback interface of every LDP speaker in the network. By contrast, Junos does not advertise any routes via RSVP by default. Rather, you must configure an RSVP LSP before Junos will create labels for the LSP. Two other subtle but important differences are the routing source and route preference. When dealing with an LDP signaled LSP, a router uses the IGP to determine the appropriate path to follow towards an endpoint. However, when dealing with an RSVP LSP, Junos will default to using the CSPF process to determine the appropriate path to follow. In cases with multiple IGPs, or multi-level or multi-area IGPs, the CSPF process may produce different results than the IGP. In fact, in some cases, the CSPF process may not be able to resolve a route, even when your IGP can resolve it. On the other hand, CSPF can be a very powerful tool for path selection. We hope to cover the use of CSPF in more detail in a future learning byte. Finally, it is important to remember that the default route preference for LDP is 9, while the default route preference for RSVP is 7. This means that the router will prefer RSVP LSPs over LDP LSPs to the same prefix. Before configuring your device to support RSVP, you first need to configure your device to support MPLS. We cover this in the MPLS Basics Learning Byte. To configure Juniper devices to speak RSVP on a given interface, you configure the interface in the protocol's RSVP hierarchy. To actually configure an LSP, you define it in the protocol's MPLS hierarchy. Here we've given the LSP the name R7 to R2 and defined its endpoint as R2's loopback address. It is a good idea to use descriptive LSP names. We will be able to see the LSP names on other routers on the network, even on routers that the LSP merely transits. Finally, to disable CSPF, we use the No CSPF Configuration Statement. You can apply that to all LSPs by configuring it in the protocol's MPLS hierarchy. 
or you can disable CSPF for individual LSPs by instead configuring the no CSPF configuration statement in the individual LSPs configuration. If you do not intend to use CSPF, it is a good idea to disable it. This will ensure the router uses the normal route selection process when selecting a route for the LSP. Once you have configured RSVP and one or more RSVP signaled LSPs, you can use some commands to monitor the operation of RSVP. Show RSVP neighbor will show neighbor relationships. Show RSVP statistics will provide statistics about the RSVP operations on the device. Finally, Show MPLS LSP will show you information about established LSPs, while Show RSVP Session will, will provide you information about the RSVP sessions. These two commands will provide you a similar information, but from a different focus. The extensive option for these commands is very useful. Let me demonstrate this for you using the topology you see on the screen. Here you see a network with seven routers and two customers. I have pre-configured all the routers except R1. I will configure R1 to communicate with the remaining routers using RSVP. Then I will configure an RSVP signaled LSP from R1 to R7. Here I am connected to R1. I will configure RSVP to communicate in all interfaces except GIGI004, the interface which faces the customer router. Let me commit the configuration. As you can see, RSVP is configured to run on several interfaces. However, there are no neighbor relationships. This is completely normal. There are currently no RSVP signaled LSPs that use R1, and by default, Junos doesn't establish RSVP neighbor relationships unless needed. Once we configure an RSVP signaled LSP that uses R1, we should see one or more neighbors. Let's configure an LSP from R1 to R7. We'll name the LSP R1 to R7. We'll specify that the LSP's destination is R7's loopback address. Finally, we'll disable the use of CSPF to calculate the path for this LSP. Let's commit the configuration and return to operational mode. If we look, we can see that there is now an RSVP neighbor relationship with R4. Let's examine the LSP details. Here you can see that the LSP is up you can see the route the LSP has taken, and you can see a log of events related to the LSP. If we look at the RSVP session details, you can also see the label assignment that was received from R4. Next, let's look at the routes. If we look at RSVP routes, you'll see there is only one route, and it is a route for the LSP endpoint, R7's loopback address. If we look at all routes for that endpoint, you will see several routes. Recall that LDP and RSVP routes are placed in the INET.3 table by default. This means that the routes are only used for resolving the next hop of BGP routes. This causes your BGP routes to follow label switched paths without impacting non-BGP routes. Here you see this in the output on screen. The INET.0 table contains the ISIS route to R7's loopback address. However, the INET.3 table contains both an RSVP and LDP route to R7's loopback address. As you can see, the router prefers the RSVP route due to the lower route preference value associated with RSVP. Let's take a look at R4, which is the transit router for the R1 to R7 LSP.
As you can see, the router has neighbor relationships with both R1 and R7. Also, you can see the R1 to R7 LSP listed as a transit LSP. Note that it displays the loopback address of both the ingress and egress node, the LSP name, the label assignment that was sent to R1, and the label assignment received from R7. Finally, if we look at R7, you can see the R1 to R7 LSP listed as an egress LSP. This means that R7 is the egress node, or the node where the LSP ends. Again, you can see the loopback addresses of the ingress and egress nodes, as well as the LSP name and the label assignment that was sent to R4. Note that R7 sent the label 3 to R4. This is a special label which tells R4 it should remove or pop the LSP's label before sending the traffic to R7. This behavior is called penultimate hop popping. one ninety two one sixty eight one point zero is a route advertised by a customer attached to R seven. Returning to R one, we can see that the that R one will use the R one to R seven LSP for the R one ninety two one sixty eight one point zero slash twenty four route. If I use traceroute to trace the path to 192.168.1.1, you will see that the traceroute shows an MPLS label was used for the communication between R1 and R4. You can also see that the label matches the assignment that we saw earlier. Because R7 told R4 to perform penultimate hop popping, there is no MPLS label on the traffic between R4 and R7. There are many things you can configure to customize the behavior of RSVP. In a future learning bite, we hope to talk about customizing the path selection for your LSPs. We also hope to cover other ways you can customize the behavior of MPLS forwarding on your Juniper devices. More information about MPLS configuration is found in the MPLS Applications section of the product documentation. Also, Juniper Education Services offers a course called Junos MPLS and VPNs. You can find more information about that course on our website. I hope you've enjoyed this quick demonstration of basic RSVP configuration. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.